Excellent. All right, good morning and thank you so much for joining us on a Saturday morning. I'd like to make sure that we know that we are hashtag Saturday teachers <laughs> here wanting to learn and join together. Um, so this is our CAPQ Connect and our Bite Size PD. The idea is that we're looking at uh, um, different topics that we get to go ahead and share and learn from one another. Today's topic, actionable feedback. We're here today, and Pam, did you want to go ahead and say something? Just we want to thank everybody for joining us again this morning, and we're excited to have this this small bite-sized series um, to, to connect people uh, um, on timely topics. And, and thank you, Jamie, for leading us through it this morning. Absolutely. This is just this fantastic opportunity for us to be able to connect share, celebrate, learn, and grow together. So I hope that you have your coffee and you're ready to go. Uh, our Cap Cube board member is working. Oh, excellent, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Our CAPQ um, board works really diligently behind the scenes to make sure that we are one connecting out with our members here in our area, but also um, that timely that timely topics is so important when we talk about actionable feedback today. That idea of how are we going to be pushing our students forward and what are we going to be doing um, to be able to give them exactly what they need in order to grow. And so I just want to say thank you again to the CAPQ board for hosting uh, today. This is a fantastic opportunity for us to all come together to grow and learn. Uh, before we get started, I did want to make sure that we are all um, familiar with the same kind of terms uh, when we're talking about feedback. And so one of the things that I had found talking about fidelity feedback, and I don't know if anybody has heard this before, um, just that idea of that feedback in general has that frequent component, is immediate uh, discriminating. And I love this last one. I thought that was really poignant is um loving, right? The way that we share this information, that we are being empathetic in the way that we deliver our feedback and being supportive. And so looking at this, um, as we kind of dive deeper today, I know some of us are going to be talking about tools. Some of us are going to be talking about the philosophy behind and that uh, deep pedagogical component of meeting our students where they are and pushing them to that next step, right? Excellent. So I did want to go ahead and start there. Did anyone want to add anything as far as uh, that background knowledge or just a comment about feedback in general? Well, I, I wanted to jump in because um, I really, it, that last one hit home to me. Um, and I really encourage anybody watching afterwards or you know right here and right now is that how we deliver our feedback is so important because I really truly believe that as I was going through school, um, in the younger grades, it that feedback that was a, the big red pen, the marking all over your page, really put me off of writing. And I was a very creative person, but I hate writing. And I think it's because I was not given the feedback in a manner in which supported me. And so I think as we dive into some of these feedbacks is just remember your students and how they would feel getting that feedback, even if it's timely, even if it's immediate, if it's not with that support and saying, hey, you tried hard, let's move forward. Um, you might take some people out of the, their passion for that, your topic. So I would, I would hope that we would do that today. Very true. Very true. I love the way you said that. Um, I, I totally agree with Corey. I think the one that, that as you go through this, Jamie, that reaches out to me is the discriminating. I, I was reading an article where it was talking about, you know, as teachers, we want we want to make sure our students are doing everything so well. And sometimes that leads to overkill on the feedback we give them. Like we're giving them so much that they can't even digest it and to be really discriminating about what you, what you, what you want them to focus on. Absolutely. Making it clear. Right. And I always think about Brene Brown of like clear and kind. Right. So uh, clear is kind. And that really kind of goes back and forth. Um, as we talk about giving feedback. I 
excellent. All right, so we're gonna move into our board member share. Um, anyone, you're more than welcome to kind of jump in. The idea is, is that this is an opportunity for you to go ahead and share. If you need sharing privileges, we can get you to go ahead and share your screen if necessary. Um, but this is an opportunity for us to be able to share out. And after we have our board member share, we're gonna open it up to our CatQ member share. I wanted to ask, I don't, Jamie, did you get um, Sarah's one point rubric? What she had mentioned, did you get a chance to drop that in? Um, I did not get a chance to drop that in. We can do that. Let me see if I have that. Did she put it in our, because I think it might be a good way to it just dawn on me with your, with our um, FILD, you know, kind of the, um, and I can look for it's it. In, Someone else can it's go. It's in the Slack. It's in Slack. Okay. In Slack. I, could do, I could do that. Someone wants to start. Oh, thanks. I can start if you'd like, because mine is a really, it's just kind of a simple, like, to go it's just a simple change I made when I was teaching writing so um as many of you know as an English teacher for many 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 years um did a lot of work with the uh, area three writing project but um the one thing I changed and was with the dawn of google docs and here I can drop let me drop in the chat I wrote a blog post about it mm -hmm. a second is uh withholding the grade so, um, you know, as a, as an English teacher, right, I spent hours and hours and hours red penning, as you would say, right. That's, that's what we were taught to do. We, to red pen, right. And, um, mark it up as darn drafts and stuff. And then you give it back to the kid and absolutely nothing happens mm -hmm. because they don't read it. Mm -hmm. They don't read the feedback. Um, and so how did I get my kids to read the feedback? So with the dawn of Google docs, you know, it was awesome to be able to put it in, you know, however you want to do it. There's a million different ways that you can use, um, you know, that you can provide feedback in a Google Doc. And I know we're going to talk about that here as well. I would, you know, just in the early days, I would just use the comments. And so I would comment. I would go through and actually like look at my rubric and I would give and I would give them a grade just for me. But instead of telling them their grade, I would just give it back to them with feedback without any grade. And, and be, and to save myself time when they would read, when they would turn it in again, I would just go to see new changes to see if they actually changed anything because sometimes they didn't change a damn thing. And so I'm like, I'm not even going to read this. Why would I read it if they haven't changed anything? So then I would just put the grade in that I had already marked down on the rubric that I had done before. Otherwise, then I could go and see, and then I could go right to what changes they made and see if they took my feedback and then I could adjust their grade. So it was something that changed for me. It was a time saver, but it was also a way for them to read to, to most of them. I would say 80% of my kids would then read the feedback because they all, even like my, you know, even the kids that already were like doing really, really well, I was, they were able to like, see, you know, you can always improve writing, you know, it, you know, writing is never finished. It's just do right. It's never done. It's just do. And so, um, you know, it was a, a way for them to even improve their skills on like certain areas and, um, and for other kids, they were, you know, Oh, I can go back and I can fix this. So and that's just kind of where, um, and then I talk about how, um, I just, my, um, partner at the time was, a fun, was so phenomenal at giving the feedback in real time. And I wasn't, and that was my growth opportunity. Like she would sit there while the kids were writing and give them those comments. And that was something that I just could never get good at. And I'm so in awe. I get too distracted. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I don't know. It's part of like my ADD, I think, but, um, <laughs> So that was something that um, I always wanted to work on and I never got good at, but I know there are teachers out there who are amazing at giving that real-time feedback when the kids are actually writing and, re and reading with them and, and so forth. So, so that was my big aha at one point was to not give them a grade. So that's my two cents. I think a lot of times students will, you know, see the grade, they're like, yeah, I'm good with that. And right. why, why would I even want to? So there, there's a motivation factor with that too. You either like some kids will be motivated by, by it, but some aren't. And some are just like, yeah, I'm okay with the C minus. I'm good. That would be my son. He'd be like, enough. Yeah. 
I love that idea of being able to look at see new changes, right? You're streamlining your time as a teacher as well. Um, being able to get in right exactly and be able to like, okay, what was changed? Oh, fantastic. They did take the information or the one thing that I said, hey, let's go do this. And when they do it, I think that's a great way too to circle back and be like, I noticed that you made these changes. And I want to say that's like, right? It's the, a foot in the right direction, right? You put an effort here and that's really great. I kind of do the same thing with the, like a class Google slide presentation. Um, so I'll leave a comment on each slide saying, this is your slide, <clears throat> but I'll actually tag the kid and assign it to them. So if you use the little at symbol or the uh, plus symbol and type in their name, it'll actually assign it to them. Uh, so that way it kind of keeps other kids off of that slide. I mean, it doesn't prevent it, but um, completely, but I do like uh, tagging the kids that way. I have evidence saying, Hey, it, it, it emailed you directly saying you have been assigned this slide. And then that way there's no, uh, no doubt and you have that evidence um, and it's immediate and they get the feedback and um, quickly. Are we interested in showcasing how to do that real quick for anybody who might not know? Yeah, let's put, let's put it in the video. If you want to show it, just so um, I was like, what's really nice with the comment section that you can add a comment anywhere. So if someone needed to add something, you can go into, you could just add a comment and in that comment section, you can push the plus symbol and you're going to be able to write it to anybody to be able to say, this is something that we're gonna need you to do. So Christina, we're gonna give you an action item and we can say, um, right? Like you can even say, uh, take a look at so-and-so, right? Or I noticed this, your next step is blah, blah, blah. And by doing so, um, and I noticed you don't actually have to push this button. Has anyone else noticed that? Mm -hmm. um, but it's there anyway, so you can if you wanted to. And when you push assign, it will go directly to that person and they receive a Google email that lets them know when they have a task that they need to complete. Um, so that could be really great. I can imagine in MYP, sorry, MYP, um, in our middle schools and our high schools, that could be really, really helpful. Pardon, I'm IB. I'm also looking at an ID symbol. So <laughs> it's, and the MYP just stands for uh, our middle years program in the IB world. Hey, I'm an MYP right here. <laughs> in my ID. <laughs> Not PYP, so yeah. that's a primary <laughs> years program. <laughs> Or acronyms. This is what we need. I know. I'm like, <laughs> ready to sing a song. OPP. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know me. Seriously, probably could do it, funny. <laughs> could do a whole rap with just nothing but acronyms. IB language, yeah. Those are the oh, yeah. Deciphering acronyms in education. That's what someone needs to do for new teachers at the beginning of the year. The rap to understand all the acronyms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. IEP, SSP. Yeah, that would be I'm, funny. I'm, I'm going to tweet Ed Campos right now. <laughs> <laughs> I already hear an IEP. Yeah, you know me. Yeah, exactly. I know, right? That's where I was going when you were all end <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. I want to say thank you, Christina, for that. I really appreciate it. Um, Marie, did you, um, did you I, mean, I, just wanna, I thought of something too, like the action all, I think that's the action mobile feedback that even working, I think with new teachers and working with, it doesn't have to be really long and lengthy, right? It's just even in the moment as they're writing that they're on the right track, you know, oh, I really like that. And, and I think too, it's that positive feedback, even if I think, um, I, I was similar a lot to Christina as an AP. So I, I come from high school. I taught AP European history, also did AVID. So there was a lot of writing and I felt like I had to write a lot, right, too. And sometimes if kids, even in that, in that draft back in the drafting of it, just giving them some positive on the right track or, and, um, but it was really hard for me. I felt like I had to write a lot more, you know? And, and so those were some ahas I had to hearing you guys talk about commenting or, you know, and then also just being, I think, also intentional about not too much, you know, where, getting bomba bombarding kids or bombarding with um so trying to find that balance is always a challenge at times right how much is too much feedback and how much is you know not enough um and getting them to to kind of 
you know, react back or do something about it. I think that's the hardest part too, right? You watch kids just not do anything <laughs> either with it. You're like, okay, you didn't change anything. You're good with, you know, that's my son too. He's like, I'm good. You know, my high, my college um, student too, he like doesn't open the feedback in their learning management system. I'm like, open the feedback and read it. <laughs> so you know what to do on the next, you know? And I'm like, you made the same mistake three times and your teacher told you in your feedback. So it's like even teaching, I think those skills to our kids is important too, right? How to kind of go in there and do that. So um, one of his college professors, like they, that was part of their task, you know, was to read the feedback from the previous project. And I'm like, you know, sure, we had to tell them to do that as a 19 year old, but um, I just, things like that, that were just kind of, you're going mulling around in my, in my head a little bit. So um, I'll go ahead and pop up Sarah Ballantyne. So Sarah is one of our CAPQ members. She's going to come back and add, I just um, reached out to her. She's going to add a little description of her, of the single point rubric, but I just wanted to throw this up, up here for you. Um, Sarah works at the county office and she works with, I think, new teacher um, for um, special education, but all of, all of the strategies are amazing and, and um, what she provides. So she threw in our Slack last night, the single point rubric concept. But if you um, scroll down, I think what I liked most about the second page here is really having the kids reflect, you know, and kind of glows and grows. And so, um, you know, it's not just the teacher um, providing the feedback, it's the student, again, self-reflecting. I'm thinking of Ketlin Tucker too, right? And a lot of this, her, um, a lot of the work that she provides and the resources um, she provides. So this was just something I thought was cool where the kids are reflecting, this is how I think I did. You know, your hard work really paid off and it shows. Um, and then there's obviously the criteria and then some grows as well. Keep up the great work to see improvement in. Um, so there are some links also at the bottom of the slides or the Google Docs that have links, I think, to the resources. So um, I did want to throw that up, up there. I didn't know if any of our anybody in the room wanted to share more maybe behind the concept on this. Um, I did just at least want to throw it up because I thought it was something that would be um, helpful. And I know that Sarah is going to come in and add some more to the slide deck too, she said. Um. I was like, the one thing that I can say is that when you're looking at a single point rubric, instead of your typical rubric of this is how you get a four and a four is these qualities and a three is this qualities and a two and a one, when you're really looking at it, it's focused more on the details of feedback that are given. Um, and so when you really start to look at that, you're honing in on, did you meet this area? This is an area, do this. I really liked this, mm. do that really do this. So it offers an opportunity to be really, really clear. Um, I'm quickly looking for, um, I was looking to see, I think I have information on a one point rubric as well. I was looking really quickly, um, but I can say they're really easy. They're much easier for teachers to correct. Um, they're easier for students to understand. They do take a little bit more thought and energy, but if you're thinking about the learning continuum or really a master of this has this, right? And these are the qualities that we're looking for. And those are kind of your objectives or your learning outcomes for whatever it is that a task that a student is doing, you're able to use that exact language. Hey, you, you can strengthen by using really juicy words in your writing, or you can strengthen your writing by using transition words, whatever that might be, um, you were able to label that right then and there. And I have a, an Edutopia article too that I can throw in the chat that it kind of explains the, exactly the concept behind exactly what Jamie was sharing. Um, I like it too, because it's pretty clear. Let me put the Edutopia, I'll drop that in the slide deck, but I'll also put it in the chat. Cause it even, you could even with the criteria, even put, you know, description reflecting achievement of mastery. And you're, you're putting your own criteria in there. And so they give an example on this of, you know, um, the thesis statement is clear, addresses the prompt and makes creative and interesting argument, you know? So it's kind of like almost a yes, no, you know, without getting into where I've seen at times like a thesis statement has a one, two, three, four, five. And then the, you know, has a one, two, three, four, five. So it's really giving, um, yeah, some of that actionable, you know, really quick feedback. Let me throw that in the chat and then I'll also add it to our slide. Um, on. I also think that <clears throat> I like this better than um, let's say the one, two, three, four, five, because, you know, a number is, 
you know, not as, mm-hmm. loving, I guess, uh, this, yeah. like the idea that, Hey, I didn't do bad. Um, you know, yep. I didn't get a one, I got to grow. I got an opportunity to grow. Yeah. We always try to teach our students. It's not a failure. It's an opportunity. And this is much better, um, I think on the student's social emotional side when giving feedback, which we have to keep in mind. Um, and that's just my platform that I'm coming from. And um, I do like this a lot better than, oh, I got a one, damn it, just throw it away, I'm done. I can't even do it. But yeah. Bro, all right, I can, <laughs> I can work with that. <laughs> well, and you're right. So many of us turn that into an ABCDF, right? Mm-hmm. The one, two, three goes right to a lowest, just, yeah, the natural um, tendency to feel like. Oh my god, I failed. I suck, you know. And and uh, give up, which I yeah, yeah. I despise hearing these kids say I give up, and it's too easy for them to give up. And you know, we need to challenge them. And if you challenge them this way, I think that's more meaningful than you know. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make you work harder by giving you an F. Yeah, I don't think yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work with some students. Right. You know, that's not the way to motivate kids, unfortunately. Yeah. And going back to what Christina was saying as well, this idea of adding that reflection, that's a happy component. When students are able to self-reflect on their own learning, you're going to get a much deeper, meaningful opportunity for growth and, and actual understanding um, from that. And so I, I really love this rubric. I've never seen the My Reflection component added to the single point rubric. This is my first time. Um, and that is absolutely powerful. And I can imagine this could be done easily. I can easily see that this could be done um, really, really well from second grade up. I can see that it can be heavily scaffold even in a first grade, even in a kindergarten classroom. Um, so it doesn't really matter what age you're really looking at. For kindergarten, the first thing I thought about is this reflection that they could do a happy face, you know, like a sad face at this face or whatever. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. like how, w- how did you write your letters? Were all your letters lowercase when you write? That is just one of those things that they're practicing or even um, how you write your name. Did you write with a capital letter at the beginning with lowercase letters at the end? Let's do a reflection on that. Where's an area that you can grow? Oh, remember first letters capital or like the glows that you have like, yay, look at this. We have lowercase letters. <laughs> Um, and then a grow could be like, remember the first letter of your name will always be capital. Great. Done. Like, and those could be just a letter. The grows could be mm-hmm. the lowercase letters. The, uh, sorry, the glows could be lowercase letters. The grows could be an uppercase letter. So that's done at the kindergarten level. So this is something that can really speak to everybody um, really well. And again, that like clear is kind. Yeah. And um, going back to Pam's point, it's discerning as well, right? We're pinpointing exactly what we want uh, without having to do all of the other mumbo jumbo. I also find when talking with students or when we come up with things, we use a lot of language. Too much language often. <laughs> and their, eye, their eyes glaze yeah. over. <laughs> yes, yes, too much, yeah. I think the single point rubric is really poignant for minimizing that. Yeah. And, you know, I was just thinking how this could be, you're right, turned into a Google slide. And then on the side, you could put those, um, the images for them just to click and drag how they feel, right? So you could do the happy face or the, the you know, and that way, then even I'm thinking the UDL strategies of kids that don't want to type or write, but could, and you know, even the younger ones to just click and drag. Um, or their you know, own. Sim- yeah, or their own, like the, a symbol or what, yeah, to, to, to quickly uh, get that back. Or I mean, you think of Bitmojis, right? How you can use your Bitmoji to stamp work. You know, that was another one where at least it, you know, a student's not using it because it's not compliant, right? Can't, um, can't push that on, on their extensions and such. But yeah, just the, the visual images to, um, to help kids. And then even for us as, as educators, right? Where we're feeling like time, how do I do it in a timely way? But yeah, that made me have an aha too of ways that technology helps, you know, with that. I, I was just thinking of insert image and you can add camera and mm-hmm. actually take a, the, the student can take a mm-hmm. real image mm-hmm. of their face, <laughs> how <laughs> they are. Hey, yeah. yeah. Take that screenshot and put it in. How, what an amazing, when you yeah. talk about reflection, I'm like, how it doesn't get any more personal, personable. Oh. Yes, yeah, I have my students, I have my students uh, use Google Drawing and make their own sticker 
Um, oh, and, that's cool. And they save yeah. it as an image file, and then they can use that in all these kind of things. And so um, even in seventh grade, they love making their own little personalized stickers that they can stamp on uh, things. So it's kind of cool to uh, have them make their own and then apply something like this is perfect. Yeah. So I know that was Sarah's. It was going to be mine. I'm going to drop one more um, other. It's called a slide snap um, as well. And so I also um, teach, um, I do Avid. I, I taught Avid, but I'm a staff developer also for Avid. And this was something that actually Joe Marquez, um, he helped write the digital teaching and learning. And he um, did slide snaps. And so it's kind of the book snap. I think you might be familiar with, um, I'm blanking on our colleague, or, you know, who did book snaps, is it Tara? It's Tara, something, I forget her last name, that started the book snap sort of um, concept. And so he kind of tweaked that into a slide snap. And it's where, again, the kids are showing their learning. They have a picture of their work. They have to do a written reflection. And then they have to do like some sort of quick video to explain. And they, um, it's part of, I'm sorry, I'm looking for it as we go, but it's called a, a learning artifact, right? And so it's a slide deck and they're actually adding learning artif artifacts throughout the year. Um, to, you know, to, to show their learning um, as well with, and then feedback that, that you can give on that. So I'll throw that in, but I'll let one of my other um, friends go, CapQ friends go, because I know it's already 9.30, we could talk forever <laughs> on this stuff, so. Hey, Marie, put it in the um, slide deck. Okay, yeah, I will. I'm looking for the example. Too many tabs open. Um, I want to jump into, because I teach uh, an exploratory of computer science and engineering, and I like the idea of this whole reflection and then where can I, you know, improve because, you know, writing a computer program is a lot like any other thing that we do in uh, school. And that's where the kids start off and it's not going to work. Um, no matter how hard they try, no matter how perfect it is, it's never going to work the first time. And trying to teach, you know, middle school down, uh, you know, to kindergarten, um, it's really hard for them to accept that it doesn't work and move forward with it. And so something like this could really help them because um, we write uh, what's called pseudocode, which is, this is what I want the program to do. This is what happened. And now I have to go back and figure out where the mistake was. And I think um, in writing, that's a great way to do that. It's like, this is what I want to do. There's your outline. And then you, when it doesn't work and you get that feedback, like, you know, the thing broke, this is where you go back and you find where the mistake was, you fix it. So I think even computer science, engineering, all those things like that, the STEM uh, projects also relate very well uh, back to writing and the feedback that we give them and they give each other um, is so important uh, for progress. And so using stuff like this and other things that we're gonna show you is so important um, in all aspects of education and learning and growing. So I like this. You mentioned peers being able to talk to one another, right? And to be able to say, I really liked this. Have you thought about, right? I think that that is so powerful and moves so many kids along. They learn so much from their friends yeah. and they also want to impress their friends as well. So it's a great motivator. I can imagine too in um, many of our middle school and high school that that could be a really nice push forward. Um, making sure that, and in order to do that, for kids to be able to look at something discerning, they have to really know what were we supposed to do, right? Mm -hmm. So that clear, that clear component, and it just hones it back in that do they have understanding of what they're doing right now? And then can they comment when they see it? Yeah. Well, I always tell my students, uh, both in science and the exploratory classes that, you know, Google doesn't hire the smartest people. They hire the people who can collaborate and solve problems together. Um, as a team. And so you have a better job, a better chance of getting a job at these high, you know, you know, tech places that have all the perks and all the stuff that you want to get. You don't have to be, you know, the 4.3 GPA. You have to learn how to work together and giving each other the inputs that you need to be able to successfully navigate a problem, um, I think is more important than as an individual single person, you know, um, just always pushing in to be successful. That's not gonna always be the best for a lot of jobs out there. Absolutely, Marie, were you were looking for something, were you able to? Did you find it? 
my internet's spinning because you know no. we're, do- we're all done. I think my I think it's, it's Saturday and it's like yeah, hey, Saturday today. <laughs> yeah, or it's the end. We were saying earlier it's the end of the year. So yeah. Everything's shutting down. Everything's like you're done. <laughs> your, in- your internet's up to here. I'd give it up. <laughs> you reached your limits. You're yeah. done. <laughs> yeah, I have it. I just opened literally. So yeah, I will um put the sling the um slide copy in it. Or if you give me sharing, I'm ha- well no, we can yeah, I'll just take a screenshot of it and then add a link because I found it. Yeah, you can see. Um, it'll be there in a minute. Yep, give me a hot minute. Do you- I want to share a quick yeah. one uh, while Marie finds her uh, you know, yeah. website and her slow internet. <laughs> um, it, I, it's nothing I want to present or anything like that. It's just um, this year has been you know a crazy year. Um, kids are really having a hard time readjusting back. And I focused my last unit in science on just providing as quick a feedback as I could. Um, can I get these kids to turn in their assignments so they can use them for the final? And um, I decided to keep a spreadsheet. And what I did was I just made a quick spreadsheet and just checked off, you know, as students turn in their work, I did little check boxes and a couple of uh, conditional formattings and things like that. Just some, I learned off the internet and some videos and I think the cool thing was because I would email the students um, how many assignments they did how many assignments they still had left uh, when the due date was I would email them before class I'd email them in the afternoon and I improved um, the completion rate of my assignments by about 20 percent so I went to mid 70 percent kids turning work in to almost 90 plus percent of my students turning their work in um, and using it all because I had that immediate, it was um, actionable. It was useful feedback um, just by keeping it organized. Um, I have almost a hundred students over several periods um, and being able to quickly email them and saying, Hey, I noticed that you got these many in great job. We still have this many to go. Uh, you have until this day to do it. And just by doing that, a few of my students that were a little bit, you know, struggling, stepped up and it was great. Even kids who were absent, quarantined, do you name it? By me providing that feedback, they were able to get some done. Um, I had a student that was out two weeks because of a, a broken ankle. He came back and he was able to get caught up with everybody because of the feedback that I gave him. And so I think that's a really important thing for us to remember as educators is there's um, feedback and then there's meaningful, uh, useful feedback and using data to help you. It's so important. Um, As long as it's meaningful for you and the students, having a bunch of data that's not meaningful is like giving a bunch of feedback that's not meaningful. Same idea. So uh, Mm -hmm. if you're going to collect information, Make sure it's useful to you and the students, and then give that feedback right away. That's my little two cents. I'll get off my. Corey, I, I think that that's huge in in like talking with teachers when we talk about like the teacher's time, you know. And we have we we have all these tools now that we can give you know great formative feedback you know to the students. But I think I've seen teachers become more selective on the assignments that they're giving mm-hmm. because kids know like what what you've just described is your kids know that you are looking at every single thing that they're doing. And so they're like, Oh my gosh, he, he cares that I turn this in. It's not just something that I turned in and I don't know when I'm going to get it back, but he's watching and he's making sure I turn all these things in. And I think teachers being more selective on the assignments they're giving and more targeted on the feedback that they're giving kids are like, Oh, this is a big deal. It's not just the, the home, the, you know, 10 problems of homework that I need to do and turn in tomorrow that I may get a piece of paper back in a couple of weeks. It may not, but there's nothing valuable to me on it. Just a check mark or a 10 or something like that, that they're like, well, you know, whatever, but the te- they're like, the teacher's on me, <laughs> you know, they, they, they're on me. They know I didn't do this and they keep bugging me to get this done. It is huge. Well, and I think it works both online and in person. Uh, so whether you're teaching at an academy, an all online academy, or you're you know quarantined for two weeks, or you're live in the classroom, um, I think it works uh, really well. To the important part is that it, the data is meaningful to both of you, um, not just to you, 
Um, I mean, teachers, I mean, we love data, we love collecting it, but if it's not meaningful to the student, why are we doing it? Yeah. Uh, and that's the important thing that um, that's my big, you know, push right now. And that's what I'm learning more about how to do is um, useful. I had a whole big long thing about it, you know, probably another acronym that I'm going to have to come up with, but uh, <laughs> useful and actionable data is more valuable than just data. Yeah. So I, can I interject really quick and say that it took uh, Corey 36 minutes to talk about spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> I've been holding uh, back. <laughs> good. I had to bring in spreadsheet. I had to bring in spreadsheet. That's okay. Sorry. Well, and I know you know our, uh, many of us are familiar with John Ike, and he always trained me early, like use data to have the difficult, like it's not difficult conversations, but I think there's so much ways you can you know utilize that to help kids grow, to help adults grow. Some of us work with our adult learners, right? And and how. Um, that feedback piece, that self-reflective, I guess that's also where I, it's dawning on me. I'm really big about reflection and feedback. And so having the kids really kind of reflect on that too throughout it, throughout it. So it's not always teacher, you know, teacher driven or whatnot, but I know he always shared that um, too is yeah, data. So that's Corey's, Corey's jam. <laughs> and John started me on the whole like spreadsheets, Google form. Of course, of course. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Like that. So I blame John Ike for all my. Yeah. <laughs> if we're going to talk about data, that's about progress, right? It's about growth when you're looking at, okay, we started here. Look at this. Yep. Um, and looking, sometimes we have to, we look a little back. Sometimes we have to look really back, but it's still at the same time. Um, being able to celebrate that growth and for students to be able to see it. Um, that's where the power is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And take ownership of their learning and say, look, I'm, I, this is what I accomplished. Even if it wasn't perfect, I still accomplished something and they should be proud of that. And no matter you know, what level you're at, um, showing growth is, you know, and being proud of it. Absolutely. I think, you know, Christina and Marie were mentioning their own kids and, and it, I have seen that. I'm, I'm really interested to see like Jamie, the kids that you're working with now who are like second and third graders coming up that well, we have teachers that are adopting this kind of, you know, feedback and, and this type of, of, you know, pedagogy in their classrooms to as they come up, because my kids are very much still the one and done. Like they, str- they struggle with the teachers that are like pushing them to be like, no, mm-hmm. you, you can't, you're not allowed to that. You know, when Christian was a senior, he was struggling with like his chemistry teacher because she was like, you're not done. You're not done until you've gone as far as you can go. And he was very much like the, it's a B minus. What more do you want? I'm fine with that, <laughs> you know, but, but it's about that, you know, teaching yeah. them like perseverance that it's like, it's not just the one and done. You have further, you can go. Mm-hmm. That's a mm-hmm. science. And um, yeah, I think Christina said it in writing too. It's, you know, so important that they realize that there's no finish line. And so many kids now are both focused on the finish line that, hey, I'm done, it's the end of the you know, unit, end, end, end. But like in science and all the, you know, in math, I mean, everything, those are just the stepping stones. And I think that's important that we shift the mindset of uh, educators and students that through these processes and all these little bite-sized PDs that we're doing, uh, we can change minds and let these kids just enjoy the learning process. Um, so we're never really done. Mm-hmm. And I think that goes back to the idea of high expectations. So when we were coming back and um, IB has actually put out a whole article on this, really kind of diving deep into this idea of um, we have students coming in, we've had a, what I'm going to say is um, an interesting year, um, <laughs> to put it lightly. And the idea was that looking at all the research from Katrina, from the Philippines, from looking at what had happened all around the world when education was interrupted. And what was really fascinating in Katrina, the students were out of school for up to a year, Mm -hmm. but they did not receive school. Mm -hmm. During our pandemic, our students still received 
education. It may have looked different, but they were still receiving said education. So we were starting to look at, okay, so what did they do? What worked? And when they were looking at two different types of mindsets, when um, students were just getting back into the classroom in Louisiana, uh, specifically, they were looking, there was a gap mind, and then there was a meet them where they are mind. And the idea of really celebrating, hey, you've made it to seventh grade, and this is what we're doing this year. And then the other school, they were saying, okay, we need to make sure that we backtrack sixth grade so you can get all of the information that you need. And when they started to look at the outcomes of the two different schools, the schools where students were met, hey, you're in seventh grade now, they literally rose, 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 rose. And the schools where they were really focused on filling the gap, the students didn't make as much growth. So I find that really fascinating when you start to think about it. The idea is high expectations. Mm -hmm. There's a learning progression. And for a lot of times, especially in a um, elementary school, we have those students for from K-5, K-6, K-8. So at my school, we are a K-8. I have nine years with those students, wow. not one year, nine um, to think about it. So I'm like, no, there's no gap. We're all on a learning progression and we are where we are. And I think it's really that poignant high expectation and the feedback, giving them the very next thing that they need. And um, that's how we're able to be able to jump um, and push and help our students move forward. But when you were saying, Pam, when you were talking about that I'm done component, I, and when I taught, I taught kindergarten for five years, that's all you'd hear. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> and so, I, I, I'm going to recess. <laughs> but that's a mindset that actually has to start from a very young age. Um, and so we'd always say, oh, and what else can you do? And, what else, right? and they're like, wait, what? Like that, <laughs> I did the thing. Oh, and is there more? Like you just put it right back on them. Mm -hmm. um, and so that then, and you would be amazed at like, wait, I could do more? Of course you could do more. Um, and to be able to see that again um, in the third grade has been really, really poignant as well. Um, I just want to make sure, I, I don't want to cut. Marie, did you want to go ahead and share? Was there any, yeah, there, I can show you the slide snap concept. So if you want to open up the um, slide deck again, I did throw that in there. Um, yeah, absolutely. And some of the way that um, it's it's using the entire, so if it's not in view, you'll miss. Uh, is there the slide snap you had talked about? And yes, then, yeah, it should be in our, yeah. So yeah, if you leave it open like that for a minute for me, because okay. not, in, not in present, because there's stuff written on the side. So, um, so slide snap's another great way to have students reflect, put feedback. And then, you know, of course you could add comments in it and you could add, and so this is um, the descriptions on the bottom, but I also put it, if you go to slide 10 um, for me, mm -hmm. I threw that example here and I'll link it, but this was one of the ones um, I'm, I'm, on, I'm in high school, but I'm sure at any level you could uh, modify that. So this is a, a sophomore that um, she, one of the, our teachers, you know, integrated that into um, her lesson and the students just kind of kept a whole slide deck of learning artifacts. And then she would um, add feedback, you know, along the way with it. So it's, it's some sort of artifact, right. That allows students to sort of own it at first. Right. And so, um, they display it and then they, they're engaging, they're revising and they're putting, you know, kind of their feedback reflection on that. So what it is, it's just a slide deck and you put a picture of the work there on the left, and then you do a text, um, reflection and then using, um, the, you know, now I think Chromebooks have a built-in video, so if you don't have, you know, screencastify or things like that, if kids, if you don't have those extensions loaded, um, I believe one of the most recent Chromebook updates includes now a, a recording feature in there. So um, that is her explaining kind of her thinking with her, her little stuffed animal there. <laughs> but um, so, <clears throat> and then you put a, a emoji. And so um, earlier um, what, um, we had is just we, we pick the emojis but you could probably have some student agency there and let the kids pick as well kind of how they're feeling <laughs> angry confused you know sad or happy about that so that's just another way and then it can be an ongoing collaborative slide deck and for you as a teacher it's really easy to find right submit it maybe via google classroom and they are on a padlet and so you can just keep going back to that one learning artifact slide deck and be adding you know your feedback along the way and then at the end of the year they had to do like an end of the year reflection as well, looking back at everything they completed 
um, for, I think this was her writing or re I forget which, which standard it kind of was or which um, essential learning goal it was. <clears throat> standard. So anyway, so it's just something to consider too, to look at. Um, I was going to talk about moat as well, but I don't need to do that. We can, um, that's just kind of talking again about all the different ways you can use audio feedback. So there's also, um, there's lots of um, apps and extensions out there that can allow you to do that too. So you can be in your car at maybe your, you know, your, your family members, you know, my band event and possibly, you know, using feedback that way to kind of explain your thinking. Um, we talked earlier, right? There's so much, <clears throat> sometimes too much feedback or very text heavy or a lot of talking. So um, that's a pro and con because if you talk, you know, really kind of being succinct in your, um, your recordings of voice. So anyways, that's it. Um, I think when we're talking about moat, I mean, the current, the latest current research, and it was Catlin Tucker who kind of like circled in and honed in on this, is that when we type out our feedback, most of the time students are able to, they're not able to understand the tone that there's hidden meaning in what is written. And for whatever reason, they're unable to hear it, even when reading. However, when you are able to speak it using your tone and explaining whatever it may be, using an extension like Moat or even doing a screencastify where you're sharing your screen and going through their work so that it's as if they were sitting next to you as you go through things um, and talk it out. They're saying that um, students are able to hear that and they're able to take that idea, which actually brings me into our um, the next kind of conversation of this feed forward idea. And I know there's another slide, so we can go back um, to that as well. And no, that was so, Moat. That's just Moat. That was good timing. Moat. Yes, it was. Yep. Well, let's go back to Moat real quick as this is just loading um, to talk about that. Um, Moat is just a fantastic, um, anyone um, can share who's used Moat before, but there are so many things that they've been updating. You can use it in Google Slides, Google Classroom, Google Docs. They're also adding an email component that is either coming up or has just um, come out. So it's a wonderful company. Cool. Did anyone want to speak about Moat or just add in their personal? Pam? As somebody who hates to type, I like this idea a lot better to give my, you know, voice feedback because I can quickly just say what I need. And I think you're right. The inflections and hearing my voice, I think comes across a lot stronger than, oh, I have to read this long text thread. I'm not going to do that. But it's like, hey, I'm really excited for you because you did a great job. Comes across a lot stronger than these are little letters that, you know, maybe I can't read. I have some students that you know, have a difficult time reading and responding, they'd rather just say it. So. Um, we adopted Moat in our district this year and the feedback from the teachers has been like, this is a game changer, especially from <clears throat> um, some of our, our uh, secondary, like middle school and high school language arts teachers who we had one teacher who had, we had a little technical issue with her extension and we had to fix it. And she was like, it, it saves me thousands of hours because I can give so much more feedback more quickly than I ever have before. And, and she's like, it's just been, a, it's a game changer that, that they have been making sure that it's never going to go away because they, um, the, the, their impression of how much more timely the feedback is being able to use that tool as kids are writing is, is off the charts, a game changer. Well, and I think then it, it also will transcribe. It'll give you a, so our, our ELD teachers love it too. Mm -hmm. So it will actually give you the transcription and then you can convert it to a different language. So that has also been, there's the audio, there's the transcript, and then it can be converted. Um, yeah, so it's really slick too with the integration with Google Classroom because we have so many of our teachers, like 90% of them using Classroom. That was huge for the grading. And that's the slide, the um, screen, the snip I put in the slide deck was once you add the extension and then if you're grading in Google Classroom, it's just automatically right there in the comments. It comes up as that little green, or excuse me, green, sorry, that little purple, <laughs> purple M, <laughs> purple and white M. Yeah. And kids love being able to hear their teachers during distance learning. It was moat that the kids were like, wait, what? Um, they got to hear me while they're working during the day. And I have to say that that was huge. Just going through as they were working, they're on the same slide. And I was able to get 
like, hey, I really liked this. I could have put that in the comment box. I didn't know if all my kids knew where the comment box, but when that purple M kind of pops up, it kind of had like, they're like, wait, okay, push the play button. And it was so easy or <laughs> even explained how to do it. And all my students were like, we heard you. Um, and then before I knew it, there was one time I gave a sneak, um, like a sneaky word or whatever, like, listen for the, like, go look and see where I put the sneaky word. And they had to dive down. It was it more so at the bottom of whatever it is that they were doing. And then they all came back the next day. You know, it was hippopotamus. It was hippopotamus. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. That's, that's a great, yeah. <laughs> It was really helpful, especially when we were doing more of that asynchronous component um, back in the spring last year. And mm -hmm. um, it was a little different when we went synchronous um, this year, but I absolutely love Mo. Um, I wanted to talk a bit about the idea. This is actually um, Joe Hirsch's idea from the book, Feed The Feedback Fix. And the idea is really this, um, he coined, Feed Forward. And so this was a podcast from Cult of Pedagogy. And I thought this was so great because it was flipping from looking at the past of what has been done or what was done to really pushing this idea to the future of what can you do next. And so um, really helps focus in on the success, success criteria and saying, hey, um, when you use this, or did you take a look at X, Y, Z and pushing that here? And then asking that question, uh, what if we added? what if we added this? And then kind of gives that buy-in component. Well, yeah, I can go do that. And um, I thought this was so poignant because it really went back and forth talking about that Hattie research. And today we're talking about that idea of feedback. That's a 0.73. We're talking about what's going to really push that student learning and student achievement. That's, I mean, really fantastic. We talked about some other things and you're talking about um, being reflective as well, that metacognition, meta, um, I mean, really kind of pushing that, pushing that whole idea forward. And when we use these together, that's the power, right? Um, using all of these different strategies together to really push things forward. There is a link here to moving feedback forward. And this is just um, the, um, Jennifer's, uh, Jennifer Gonzalez's podcast, but I really wanted to kind of focus in on this idea of where we used to or what we turned a feedback versus the idea of feed forward. And so looking at regenerating talent, can you imagine regenerating talent? Like, whoa, you're so like, right? So that just already puts kids in that positive mindset. Um, will you be able, will you go share that? Will you show us how to do that kind of language puts them in the expert role. Um, and then the other part too has impact because it's simple and being able to say, here's your very next step. Um, really, really po um, poignant at the time. And then I love this too, that group dynamics um, and putting those different viewpoints. And I think Corey, you had mentioned that idea of having kids look at each other's work and that peer feedback um, component. And so I still use the word feedback, but I actually mean the word feed forward. Um, not a lot of people know the word feed forward. So it is still customary in my own language to use the idea of feedback, uh, use the language feedback, but my approach is a feed forward. And I just regenerating talent really kind of stood out to me of uh, pushing that forward. And so back on our link here, and I put both of these images into our slide deck so that you'll have the article um, here as well as um, really kind of focusing in and honing in on this. Did anyone want to say some last words about feedback before we move on? Well, this was a wonderful, wonderful discussion today talking about leveling up our students. And so we have another bite-sized opportunities, but we're really looking for you um, to kind of talk to us more about what are some of your top choices that we could be looking into. This summer, we have a wonderful opportunity for our book study. We have a link out there for a Google form for you to be able to choose some titles. Maybe you can let us know if there's any titles out there, um, but join us for our book study. Again, it'll be your choice, the topic that we're choosing that we can get into. So 
we want to go ahead and kind of share. Um, that'll be happening. Our next bite size will be happening in August, and our summer book study will be in July. We do have a link there. We have a special event coming up in September, and before you know it, it'll be fall queue. So join us for our affiliate meetup. So go ahead and save some of these dates into your calendar. We'd love to go ahead and have you. Um, but overall, I just want to say thank you so much for coming today and watching us here um, at home. It's a really big deal. And again, hashtag Saturday teachers. And thank you so much, CAPQ, uh, for putting this together and being able to have that conversation of what is going to help drive our students forward. It's always fun to get together on a Saturday and just enjoy talking with everyone and, and we'll post the videos and uh, share all this fun stuff with our CAPQ members. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.